right, so in this video, I'm gonna tell you five things that I like about the RWD FXRT bearing. Let's check it out. What's going on, YouTube? BK Low is back in the building. Picking this up from a, from a beautiful ride with the road captain, Jared, aka the pants, aka edge of landscaping, and my main man, Vongus Vlad. And a lot of you have been requesting this video ever since I did the 2020 upgrade video, where the star of the show was this FXRT fairing. But I wanted to wait until I put a good amount of miles on the fairing to really start telling you my thoughts and what I like about it and whether, if it was worth it, etc. And you can see, I don't know if the video is picking it up, but we're about to hit 800 miles. So, you know, we're almost at about a thousand. I feel like that's enough for me to give you a pretty good review on this fairing and also mind you I've ran the fairing at this point in various different scenarios I've ran it through the rain up in the mountains like this in the urban setting through through in and out of Brooklyn through heavy traffic highway miles I've run it through all the different environments at this point to give it a really fair review and I probably dropped my first impression videos where you watch me pick up the bike from the shop and just hear my initial thoughts on the fairing from the first time I pick it up. And I don't know, first impression videos from moto vloggers, I feel like they're all kind of the same vibe where it's a lot of excitement, it's nothing but good things to say, you know? Like, have you ever found a moto vlogger who did a first impression video either on a bike that they bought or a part where they're just totally disappointed and regretful? I don't think that exists thanks to um, YouTube and Instagram where we're fortunate enough these days to be able to do a lot of research into the bikes that we choose and the parts that we choose. So when you do make the upgrade, I'd say there's probably a very high satisfaction rate in the year of 2020. But my thoughts now are a little bit more refined than my thoughts on the day where I just picked up the bike, so figured this would be a good time to tell you guys that since so many of you have asked me to do this video. Oh man, look at this beauty right here. Look at this beauty. I know it's off topic, but come on, man. Only the cat skills are going to offer you a beautiful shot like that. So here we go. Thing number one that I like about the FXRT fairing is how it performs in high speeds. That was one of the biggest things I noticed, which is this bike is all of a sudden able to comfortably do speeds. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, when I was running the Road Warrior, I was very comfortable doing high speeds. But now basically, the way this fairing makes the bike feel, let, let, let's put it this way, it makes 70 miles per hour feel like you're doing 60 miles per hour. It very much makes high speeds comfortable, manageable, and just offers more maneuverability and comfort in those speeds. So that was one of my biggest noticings about the fairing off the bat, is just the bike is performing way better in the high speeds, specifically the highway miles. So thing number two that I really like about this fairing is I really thought the first time, you know, when I was gonna stand the bike up and everything, I thought it was gonna feel like a road glide. I thought it was gonna be top heavy. I thought the bike was gonna be a lot heavier. Turns out, and again, this might be an exaggeration and people might disagree with me, but the bike does not feel any heavier than when I wasn't running it. And I don't know if that has to do with the physics of the fairing or the way it's balanced or whatever, but it really doesn't feel any heavier to me. 
No, that's just saying like when I stand it up. There are definitely, I feel, I definitely feel a difference in curves at this point as opposed to running a T-Sport. But in terms of just weight in general, I'm amazed at how light this fairing is. It looks heavy, you know, but it's really not. So I think they nailed it with the weight on this thing while also providing you with optimal wind deflection. You know, things straight up just cuts through the wind. I love it. Which leads me to thing number three. So like I said, yes, curves even like this one feel different. But it has not prevented me from carving out any twisties like I would do with my T-Sport. So I really like how the fairing handles in the curves. Again, it definitely feels different, you know, and I'll do a separate video telling you how, like, the exact differences between this fairing and a Road Warrior for anyone that's interested. But again, the fairing is not a hindrance in terms of uh, carving out twisties. Dude, look at this. It's like a, what is this, a run? So many bikes! When will it end? How are there this many bikes and a Corvette? <laughs> oh. So yeah, I love the way the fairing performs in the curves. Thing number four that I really like about this fairing is I like the fact that it offers you so many different routes to go in terms of customizing it. Some people like to install speakers here. That's not the route I'm going with it, but you could do that if you want to. Like my buddy Retro Jones has speakers in his. Some people install the pod, the pod lights that go in the vents on the bottom there. I, I actually really like that look. I might consider doing that. As well as it is nice to just get that much extra lighting. So I think the pods might be something that I, that I consider. You could throw lowers on here, which I do have lowers, but I'm still on the fence of if I want to actually throw them on or not. That's probably a separate video where maybe you guys can give me some insight on that decision. You know, you could play with the windshield. I know Clockworks makes a windshield for FXRT fairings that, you know, gets pretty good reviews. So I just like the fact that there's just so many different ways that you could go. You know, when I see, when I look at bikes with FXRT fairings on Instagram, it's very rare that two back-to-back -back are set up the same way because there's just so many different routes that you can go with it. So I like the fact that it's really customizable. All right, so thing number five that I like about the FXRT fairing is I like the fact that it integrates a seven-inch headlight. If you saw my uh, 2020 upgrade video, I didn't actually know that when I bought it, so I had to re-buy the Fly Eye in 7 inches. But man, do you get so much more lighting, and does it really give the bike just such a bigger presence on the road in terms of visibility? So I love the fact that we're able to run this bigger 7-inch headlight on this. You know, it's awesome. Definitely dig any extra light where we could throw it in there. So yeah, I am, you know, about a thousand miles later, very, very happy with this fairing, very happy with the choice that I made. I knew I was going to like it from the research that I did and from the type of riding that I do. It 100% matches my riding style. So who do I recommend this fairing for? Pretty easy. If you're someone that likes to go fast and you like to go far, if you're doing long bike trips, if you're doing highway miles, this fairing is gonna make your life a lot better, 100%. Who I would not recommend this fairing for? If you're doing mostly urban miles. You know, if you're doing mostly urban miles, a lot of stop and go, a lot of slow speeds, a lot of lane splitting, legally of course, you're probably not going to want to go in on this fairing. But that being said, what I will add to this is it hasn't really affected my urban riding. Like I'm still able to ride 
this bike the same way in Brooklyn as I did when I didn't have the ferry, you know? It doesn't really hinder the urban riding, but again, if you're solely doing urban riding and that's most of the riding you're doing, it's just not the best tool for the job, you know? You're gonna wanna go with like a gauntlet or a road warrior. Sick curve, bro, sick curve. Another huge squad of bikes. Very cool, my people, very cool. Love that people are getting out there and riding. But, you know, it is a fair review, so I'm not just gonna stand here and, like, sugarcoat this thing. There are some things that I think can be improved in terms of this fairing. One improvement that I would make, and again, I take responsibility for this before I even see this, but basically, I had this I, I had this fairing shipped, I never opened it, and then about a month and a half later, I just gave it to the shop unopened to install it, right? So it turns out that, you know, when the shop gets around to getting this thing on, they unbox it and the fairing has multiple cracks in it that were clearly from the shipping. So. You know, it was literally the first time the fairing was being opened, so the mechanic hits me up and is like, hey, you know, there's multiple cracks on here. You might want to contact the company about it because we're going to have to repair it when we send it out to get painted. So I contacted the company. The thing that I proposed was like, I don't want you guys to have to send me a new fairing or anything, but would you at least consider throwing into the repair bill you know, for me to repair these cracks. And they were not open to doing that because they said that too much time had gone by. So, not too psyched on that because I do know a lot of companies out there that would have handled that differently, but RWD didn't. And again, I'm not taking away from them. I'm not taking a shot at them. I'm taking responsibility for not opening it up and making sure that it was good when I received it. So I'm not blaming this on them by all means, but you know, it would have been nice to have them help me out a little bit to fix some damage that clearly wasn't my fault. Something else that's, you know, a little sketchy about this fairing that I'm still getting used to is like, I'm not gonna stand here. Like, yes, I've lane splitted with this fairing. Yes, I did it in the state of California where it was legal. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that, you know, lane splitting is no problem with this fairing. You definitely, not that you didn't have to before, but if you decide to lane split with a fairing like this, you have to 100% be on your A-game. There's a little less visibility immediately downwards, as you can see. So you just really got to be on your game. You know, with a T-Sport fairing, I could easily lane split. I could easily lane split in second gear, switching between second, first and second. After switching to the FXRT, I rarely, if I'm lane splitting, go past first gear. I don't know if that's how it's going to be forever, or if I'm still just getting used to it, but it definitely makes lane splitting harder, which is why I'm telling folks, again, assuming you're in the state of California, that if you're running, if, you, if you're doing a lot of urban riding, you might not want to run this ferry. And then the third thing that might be a deterrent for you getting this fairing is it's expensive, man. Like at the end of the day, after you do all the mounting hardware, the fairing itself, not to mention paying to get the fairing painted and installed if you're not going to do it yourself. I wasn't going to mess around with this and do it myself. I just, this was a job that I wanted to be done by a professional. Like at the end of the day, man, you're dropping money. You're dropping serious money. So the thing that I wonder if there's a way to offer the same product, but if there's ways to make it a little bit more cost friendly to uh, the good riders out there that are trying to get their bike dialed in to where they need it to be. But those three things that I mentioned are not enough, not even near enough for me to say that I don't recommend this fairing. 
I 100% recommend this fairing. Like, I am so happy with this thing. You know, I'm definitely not looking back to run anything else at this point. It has changed up my ride in such a positive way. And yeah, I'm grateful to have this bike set up where I think it's at just an amazing place right now. I'm so happy with this bike four years later. And thank you guys for following along with me in the journey. So that's my review on the FXRT. I hands down recommend it. Hands down am in love with this bearing. If you guys have any questions or concerns or you think I missed something, as always, leave it in the comments. It makes my day when I get to read that comment section. You know, my channel is still small enough where I can respond to every single one of your comments, so let me know how you feel. That's what keeps me going, man. It's you guys. As always, thank you for watching. Regardless of what you're running in terms of wind protection, stay safe out there and stay low. Listen to the bad brains. Positive mental attitude. And BK Low is out. <laughs>